Andrew Wright, our operations officer, going to explain to us how he would like to see pre-operations checks done. And Dane Williams here is going to help him. Audio, well, we've <laughs> got an engine hatch here which we need to open. It's got four twist lock, twist lock um, hatch latches on it. So you flip up the handle and rotate that around through 90 degrees. So all four of these need to be open, and you may need to stand on the hatch in order to release the pressure so that you can open it. Grasping with two people, one in the opposite corners, you can lift the hatch and carefully place it down on the deck and lean it against the tow post. It's a routine that you really need to get into when you're uh, doing a pre-start check on the engines and that's critical so that you don't miss anything as you go around the engine doing the pre-start checks which we rely on to make sure that the engines are going to run reliably throughout the day. Starting at the front of the engine bay, there's a water separating fuel filter down in the bilge. You'll be able to see there's a clear bowl on the bottom of that which contains a yellow fluid, that's diesel. You need to inspect that to make sure there's no evidence of water or sludge, green sludge, down in the, in the bottom of that bowl. Okay, that filter's clear, so that's good. Now the next thing that we need to look at is the belt on the front of the engine. The port engine has one belt only, and the starboard engine has two belts. It's inspected by lying on the front of the, uh, lying down on the engine and checking the tension on the belt by hand. If the belt's loose, you'll notice that there'll be black dust around the side of the engine bay. That's a good indication that there's something wrong with the belt. So moving around the front of the engine, we then come to our seawater strainer here, which is to remove debris from the water coming in to cool the engine. It's got a clear lid on it, so a visual inspection. If there's any dirt in there, speak to the skipper about cleaning it, and, and they'll uh, give you some instructions on that. Moving further back, down the side of the engine is our cooling system. Um, need to inspect that for any evidence of salt water leaks. A salt water leak will look like a white crusty um, substance around the end of a hose um, or maybe dripping down the side of the engine. The other thing that we've got here is the engine oil uh, dipstick to check the oil level. So pull the oil, uh, pull the dipstick out once, wipe it clean and then dip it again to check. Okay, there's a max mark here, so you can see that we're pretty much on the max mark, and there's a minimum mark there. If you need to top the oil up, oil stored under the sink in the cupboard, and the oil's filled through the black cap here. Okay. Also at the front of the engine, we have our coolant. Coolant is under the yellow cap at the front, and there's two steps inside the cap. The coolant level should be level with the top step. If the coolant level is low, uh, additional coolant can be found also under the sink and you must use the VCS yellow coolant. The bottle is clearly labelled. <coughs> right, yeah. Moving further back, we have a power steering reservoir hanging off the side of the boat and it's directly above the steering control unit. There's no um, dipstick in here, but you can see there's a fluid level that's potentially a little bit low at the moment, and that's full, uh, filled with ATF, automatic transmission fluid, which should be a red colour. Um, if that fluid in there is milky, there's something wrong. Whilst we're here, we've noticed that we've got a salt water leak from the end of the intercooler, and we'll report that to maintenance to be rectified during the week. Further aft, we've got our power trim fluid reservoir, Again, that's a red coloured fluid, it takes ATF also, and it has a min and a max marking on the front of the bottle for reference. Just make sure that the leg is tilted fully down when you're reading that fluid level. The last two things that we need to do is to check the bilge pump. Thanks, Dane. And the assistant. Yep. Um, and down here under the engine we've got two float switches. So the one on the side is a high water alarm. And if you lift that up with a boat hook, which is found near the cabin door, you can hear an audible alarm from the dash. And we have another float switch further down in the bilge that runs the pump. If you lift that up also with a boat hook, you can hear the pump run. Okay, so a quick visual inspection around the engine bay reveals that everything else seems to be in order. Um, and we'll now be able to start the engine up with the hatch off 
listening for anything that might be amiss um, and give the engine a quick spray with some inox just to protect it from rusting. And what sort of spots would you spray? Um, just around any of the engine mounting bolts, um, any of the wiring harness connectors or, or anything that looks like it could be rusting or corroding. Just a light spray. Try and avoid the hoses because the inox will damage the hose. So, also avoid the belts with the inox. Don't spray inox on the belts. Okay.